Hey guys, hope you're having a beautiful day today. So I wanted to talk about crypto wallets. Maybe you have a friend or family member that keeps telling you, hey, you know, get into crypto, buy some crypto. And you're like, okay, but how do I do it? Uh, you just need a, a wallet and a crypto wallet and you're good. You're like, okay, but what's a crypto wallet? I don't understand. Give me, give me some info, right? So that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to explain to you what crypto wallets are and the different crypto wallets that are available and which ones are more secure depending on what you want to do if you just want to hold it or if you want to be an active trader all right before i begin please hit that like and subscribe button it's going to really really help grow my channel and thank you so much for the support now what is a crypto wallet well a crypto wallet you could look at it like a like a nap you could say imagine an app and in this app you're going to have two things you're going to have a private key and you're going to have a public key right just picture it this way if you want somebody to send you something what you do is you give them your public key right and a great example is let's say you have some shoes and uh, you want to sell them you sell them to your friend and you're like okay you know just uh send it to my bank account this is my email address or this is my phone number right you could say that's like your public key your email address your phone number and that email address or phone number is usually connected to your bank account right your bank account your routing number is all connected you're not going to give them your routing number or your bank account you're only going to give them your phone number so that's what a public key is it's the key that people use to send you crypto now, when does the private key come into place? The private key comes into place when you want to take money out of your out of your crypto wallet, right? If you want to take some money out, you need the private key. So that's the basic function of a crypto wallet. Now, what are the different crypto wallets that are available out there? Well, you have two main wallets. They're called hot wallets and cold wallets. And what a hot wallet is, is basically that it's connected to the internet, you know. You could trade crypto very easily. It doesn't take a lot of effort to trade because uh, that's what a hot wallet is. Now, a cold wallet is when you store it, you know, basically it's disconnected from the internet. And now it's a little extra step to go in and connect it back to the internet and try to trade your your currency, basically. A cold wallet obviously is going to be more secure than a hot wallet because of the fact that you're not connected to the internet, right? So uh, it's basically stored offline in simple terms. One of the wallets and one of the safest wallets out there is the hardware wallet. And I'm going to show you what this looks like. You can see over here, this is the Ledger Nano X and the Ledger Nano S. Right, it looks like a USB stick with a little screen and that's where you will download your uh, the little crypto apps every single one of these you could see their Bitcoin you could see Litecoin it has its own private keys right and that's where you store your crypto you transfer it from your computer to your USB and then you store it somewhere right it's disconnected from the internet nobody could take it from you nobody could hack it Unless, of course, you know, they put a big warning here, beware of ongoing phishing scams. Uh, you gotta be careful with that because uh, the way that you retrieve this wallet in case you lose your USB, let's say, is that they give you uh, secret keys, like 12, 24, depending on the ones that you buy. And you could retrieve your, your wallet, per se, your crypto wallet, by putting the secret keys. And what these phishing uh, campaigns do is that they ask you for for your secret keys. Like, hey, give me your 24 secret keys and we're going to help you with X, Y, Z. So you got to be careful with that. But this is what a hardware wallet looks like. So USB. This is another one by uh, Trezor. Trezor. Uh, you know, this is what a hardware wallet is. Storing your crypto offline. That's what a hardware wallet is like a USB, for example. Now, you also have paper wallets. I don't think people do this anymore. Um, I did it once just to test it out, and it does work. But that was back in 2017, you know. They didn't really have, like, hardware wallets and stuff. 
the moment hardware wallets came out those usbs that i show you this was gone already i don't think people use this anymore but basically it's the same concept right you will get your private key and you will generate a qr code out of that and you could just scan your qr code and withdraw money or you could put also your public key as a qr code and send money to it etc but people don't really use this and it's not really reliable so i do not recommend this at all another one is this desktop wallet so the desktop wallet is like you know just having the app on your desktop that's what a desktop wallet is you have your wallet on your desktop very simple very straightforward some example are exodus you know uh, electron I, ha I had exodus before as a desktop wallet and the advantages of this right between a desktop wallet and a hardware wallet is that it's easier i could just turn on my computer and, and trade crypto because it's already connected to the internet compared to a hardware wallet where i'm gonna have to take it out of wherever i put it in my closet in my drawer whatever then connect it to the computer maybe putting a passcode or anything to open it up and then be able to trade so it's a little extra step compared to a desktop wallet right uh you also got mobile wallets which is an app but on your phone right similar to a desktop wallet but imagine on the phone uh you gotta be careful with these two because you might have some viruses on your computer or on your phone so make sure you have a very good antivirus and then the last one is a web wallet and these are uh if you ever heard of the website called coinbase this is what basically they use right um, they have web wallets and that's where they have your private keys and stuff um but yeah those are the different type of wallets that are available now which one of these is more secure if you're wondering the sec more securest one is the one that's going to be offline the one that's not going to have any connection to the internet whatsoever so it cannot be hacked is it will be a hardware wallet right so if you want the most secure one you might want to get a, a ledger nano x or you might want to get a tracer whichever that's the most secure one now let's say that you're like hey you know i want something secure but at the same time i want to have the ability to easily trade whenever i want you know go back and forth and trade my cryptos well if you want that and you want to get then uh, either a desktop wallet or a web wallet it's going to be the easiest but again because it's always connected to the internet there's always that that potential or that uh you could say there's always a possibility that it could be hacked right so it's not as secure as a hardware wallet now somebody asked me uh you know which is the safest if i want to have um i want to trade actively and also have a website that's nice and secure and has really low fees um back in the days <laughs> i say this like it was 30 years ago but back in the days like two years ago i used to personally use binance that was my favorite one it's a little more difficult to learn it's not like coinbase coinbase is very simple but binance had like all the coins you could imagine i live in the u.s so they had no issues back then but then they started having issues in the u.s and now it's it's very difficult to trade in binance if you're living in the u.s if you're not in the u.s then you could probably use binance without any issues um but right now the most secure one uh, i think in my opinion is coinbase uh, but they do have higher fees um you might want to use coinbase pro maybe that works out a little better but yeah i i personally hold my my crypto i don't really I'm not an active trader i just hold it because i believe in the technology and uh i don't really want to sell at these low prices right but it's okay if you do you know i'm not judging you if you do that that's fine uh, there's nothing wrong with making money <laughs> um but i don't know maybe you want to try one of these you know uh if you're in the us i don't know about binance uh, i wouldn't recommend binance but maybe kraken some people like bitrex people are into bitrex gemini try one of these out you know um i cannot really recommend any of them that's really secure and has low fees because i've only used these two 
I've used this one too, but uh, I took all my crypto out of here and put it in Binance, in uh, Coinbase. So yeah, the most secure one I think is Coinbase, but it has the higher fees. So yeah, you might just want to try these out. Maybe Gemini, you know. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, let me know if at least, you know, in the comment section, if you understood uh, everything, I, everything I mentioned in the video. Or if you didn't, then I'll try to make it a little more easier to understand. Uh, but thank you so much for the support, guys. Stay safe out there. Peace. Here in the United States. The SEC is really picking winners. They're saying there's a duopoly of Bitcoin and Ether are the two digital assets, the cryptocurrencies that will be not regulated by the SEC here in the United States. And it really, I think, sends a, an ominous sign for innovation around cryptocurrency in the United States. Picking winners in general has not been something the U.S. government should be in the business of doing.